all the headlines say there's a new coronavirus vaccine with a 90% effectiveness. The question is, how excited should we be? What's happened is that drug company Pfizer and German biotech company BioNTech have released the preliminary interim results of a phase 3 trial of a coronavirus vaccine. Phase 3 trials are big trials. They're normally the last stage before a drug or treatment gets approved for use in the clinic. And in this one, they got 40,000 people. And they either gave them a real coronavirus vaccine or a fake placebo injection. And at this point in the trial, 94 people have come down with coronavirus-like symptoms, then been tested and confirmed to have coronavirus. And of those 94 people with coronavirus in the trial, fewer than 10 of them had been given the actual real vaccine. The vast majority had been given the placebo injection. What this means is that by their calculations, this vaccine is 90% efficient. This is great news and far more effective than expected. The FDA, the Food and Drugs Administration in the US, who'd be responsible for approving this vaccine, said they'd consider approving anything with an effectiveness above 50%. So this obviously smashes through that low bar. This is a new kind of vaccine, called an mRNA vaccine. And if it gets approved, it'll be the first time that an mRNA vaccine has been deployed in the clinic. The way that it works is actually surprisingly similar to the way that a coronavirus works. So when a coronavirus infects one of your cells, it sneaks in its genetic material, which is made of RNA. And the RNA contains the instructions to build thousands of copies of the coronavirus. And then your cell, unsuspectingly duped, builds thousands of coronaviruses. They can explode out and infect a load of other cells, which can produce loads more coronaviruses, and so on. Now, luckily, the vaccine doesn't contain the genetic instructions for the whole coronavirus, just for one specific and very recognisable part of it something called the spike protein, which is found all over the outer coating of the virus. So when your cells receive those instructions, they then start producing the spike protein. And as lots and lots of that spike protein gets made, your immune system can learn to recognise it. It can learn to make antibodies. It can teach T cells how to attack cells that are producing that virus. And that means that if you get infected by an actual coronavirus, then your body's seen it before. It's got antibodies and T cells ready to go, and you can fight off the infection. So these results sound great. And mRNA is really cool. But before we get too excited, let's have a look at some of the caveats here. The first is that scientists are rightly advising caution, because we've not seen the full data behind these results. We've just seen the headline figures from Pfizer's press release. Of course, we should wait until we've got all the evidence before we form a judgement. But it does seem unlikely that these numbers are going to dramatically change here. Because at their core, they're based on a very simple statistic. It's the percentage of people in those 94 who had COVID who'd been vaccinated. And it seems unlikely that a huge pharmaceutical company like Pfizer is going to stake its reputation on massaging such a simple figure, especially when it knows every single scientist in the world is going to be watching this. The second caveat is, as I said, these are interim results. They're done partway through the trial. They're hoping that the trial will be concluded when 164 people in the whole trial have had COVID. And it's possible that in the final analysis, the effectiveness will be a little bit lower than it seems to be at the moment. However, this is unlikely to be a dramatic change. Maybe at the extreme it could be 10% less efficient, but we're very unlikely to see a halving of efficiency, or something that would completely transform our view of this vaccine. Because of the way this trial is designed, it doesn't tell us everything we could possibly want to know about this vaccine. In order to get counted in these figures, you had to have coronavirus symptoms and then go on to test positive. So firstly, it doesn't tell us anything about asymptomatic patients. Can you still get asymptomatic coronavirus? Does it mean that you can't pass the disease on? We just don't know the answers to those questions yet. It also doesn't tell us anything about the most severe forms of coronavirus. Can it stop at-risk people from getting hospitalised or dying of the disease? And that's something that we obviously really want to know. And finally, it can't tell us how long this immunity lasts. We obviously know that it works for a few months, because that's how long the trial's been going on. But does it last a few months, a few years? Does it last a whole lifetime? Unfortunately, the only way to find that out is just to watch people for longer. This type of vaccine also comes with logistical issues, because while it's being distributed, it needs to be kept incredibly cold, somewhere around minus 80 degrees C, which isn't impossible, but it is a challenge. For example, one way you can keep things that cold is to cover them in dry ice, so frozen carbon dioxide, but there are strict limits as to how much dry ice you're allowed on a cargo plane, for example. It might also be particularly difficult to distribute in developing parts of the world where there's less access to electricity or worse transportation networks. This isn't completely without hope. During the Ebola outbreak, 300,000 doses of Ebola vaccine, which needed to be kept at minus 60, were distributed around Congo, which was a conflict zone. So it's clearly possible, but it's just another little hump in the road if we want to try and distribute this vaccine very widely. 
Pfizer estimate that they can produce about 1.3 billion doses of this vaccine by the end of 2021. And though that is a lot, it's not enough to lead us straight out of this pandemic. The first thing is that you need two doses of this vaccine in order for it to work, separated by three weeks. So you can immediately divide that number by two. So that means we're looking at about six or seven hundred million people vaccinated. And given that there are 8,000 million people, almost 8 billion people on the planet Earth, that means that less than 10% of us are going to be vaccinated by the end of next year. To take the UK as an example, the UK government is down for about 40 million of these doses. So divide that by two, that's 20 million vaccinated people. If you look at the over 65 population of the UK, it's about 12 million. So that's already going to use up more than half of our vaccine dose. And by the time you pull in other people from vulnerable groups who are younger, it means we're probably going to get a very good way towards vaccinating the most vulnerable, but it's a long way from vaccinating the general population. That means that we are going to have some protection for the people who are at most risk from coronavirus, and that's obviously a great thing, but we're a long way from the much vaunted herd immunity. I'll certainly feel far more comfortable leaving the house, going shopping or meeting up with friends if I know that any transmission chain I'm inadvertently part of is much less likely to end with an older or more vulnerable person who will get very serious COVID or maybe even die of the disease. But unfortunately, there's still plenty for younger people to worry about, whether for their own health or the risk of transmitting it to their friends. COVID can still be very serious and we still don't know all the long term consequences of the disease. So I think as a vaccine is being rolled out, we're still going to see social distancing, mask wearing and keeping two metres away from people as very important parts of our armoury against this disease. Given this, if we want to vaccinate literally everyone over the next couple of years, then we have to hope for multiple vaccines, which are hopefully as effective and as able to be manufactured at scale as this one. And the good news is that the success of this vaccine bodes well for the success of others too. There are lots of different coronavirus vaccine candidates that are targeting this so-called spike protein. And the fact that it confers immunity in this case suggests it might confer immunity in those cases too. So keep an eye out over the next couple of months because there are lots of these trials due to start reporting. And if they're successful, we could be seeing an awful lot more vaccine options over the next few months or years. So I think what this means is that we can finally say there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We've got a vaccine candidate that just might work. But the trouble is we still don't know exactly how long the rest of the tunnel is going to be. Depending on how effective this vaccine is in the real world, how much of it we can manufacture and how easy it is to distribute, and then all of those questions apply to any other vaccines in development that have successful trials over the next few months, well, that's going to determine how the next 12 months look. I think we can definitely say that things will be getting better over the next 6 to 12 months, but we can also say that life probably won't be back to normal at least before the end of 2021. One reason I really hope this vaccine works is the hope it would give me for the future. Because mRNA vaccines are something called a platform vaccine technology, which means they're very easily adapted to a new virus should one emerge. All you need for an mRNA vaccine is a sequence of genetic code that corresponds to a particularly recognisable part of the virus that your immune system can learn to spot and then defend your body against. So all you need if a new virus arrives is to get its genetic sequence and find one of those sections. As an example, the first sequences of the current coronavirus were produced way back in January. If we could integrate sequencing into more regular clinical care, we might even be able to get a sequence quicker than that. And then, as we start to understand how you make these mRNA vaccines and how safe they are, it might be that we could compress this already impressive timeline so that the vaccines could be developed even more quickly. So, cross your fingers for this vaccine. Not just for this pandemic, but for the next one, and the next one, and the next one.